Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tennessee Fats, and today I'm coming to you live from my Paula Comics. Today we're doing an unboxing. I'll show you the box first. Now, some of you, when you hear the word today we're doing an unboxing, saying, oh, it's just another mail opening. But this isn't just another mail opening. This is the finalization of a two and a half year long project. Early in 2020, I started doing this. This is a custom bound edition. I started sending a whole bunch of books down to a company called Houch and Bindery down in the States. And I started getting a whole bunch of books back. And I'll tell you, it took me two and a half years of digging through the bins to find all the issues I needed to finish out this entire project. It was a long one. And I gotta tell you, this box being here is particularly fulfilling because now it's done. That's something I like. What we're going to do today is we're going to open this one up. I'm going to show you guys what the bound books that are within this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the entire run so you guys can see what I started with and how I finished this. And then I'll talk a little bit about why I did this. Let's get into it. And we're back. I tell you, this is always where I do the obligatory YouTube stuff. And I'm going to say if you like videos about comics, if you like videos about Robert E. Howard, if you like the discussions of Robert E. Howard, by all means, subscribe to the channel. If you're actually enjoying this binding series that I've done, give this thing a thumbs up. It really does help. It's interesting watching the analytics and how really the latest videos are going up and up and up in the trending. And I find that fascinating. You realize I've actually passed a small milestone in actual subscribers? Very cool. Why would I? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. But you know what? If you're enjoying it, I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with us. Let's get into this thing here. This is the box in question. Kaboom. Now, I've covered up all the obligatory uh, sensitive information here, so what we'll do, because this is a much more attractive box to look at the back of, let's start over here. So, let's start with, what is this? What what have we really done here? Why did I do this, and what was the motivation for doing this? Well, I tell you, those of you who don't know, my comic collection from back in my original owner days, and this is back from me buying off the racks in the early 90s, and, well, actually the late 80s, early 90s, which actually back then was mostly done at a convenience store when I was really young, uh, so there were newsstands. Uh, my collection was about 16,000 books. I pared that down a lot. I got rid of a lot of it, and I'm down to about, I guess, around 6,000 books now. But when I was paring things down, though, when I was looking at what I still had left, because I said, these are important to me, I said, you know what I should do? I should start getting things bound so I know exactly what I've got. I can really enjoy the things that I enjoy, and they won't get destroyed, and I can read them. There's a lot of stuff that I like, other people don't like. Um, and I know that's somewhat silly, but it's true. Everybody has individual taste. Wow, look at the packaging in this. Holy mercy. Like a vault action. Like a, wow, well done. There it is. So what's happened is a lot of the stuff that I like, nobody likes, nobody reads, nobody, nobody really gets into it, and they don't reprint it all. And if they do, they give you these flimsy little trade paperbacks. Um, I don't know. I don't really enjoy trade paperbacks. I, honestly, I, I like a hardbound version. Normally because I'm reading things when I'm sitting out in the back patio. Or I'm sitting somewhere. Or I'm not sitting in a cushy desk or on a comfy chair. I don't sit on comfy stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm old and grumpy. And I like to be angry all the time. So I sit in weird places when I'm reading stuff. So it started me with the process of saying I should get all this stuff bound. Which is what I did. But the problem was I had a whole bunch of holes in what I wanted to bind. So the result of that was, I really couldn't find all the stuff to finish what I needed. So this was a long project where things went in out of order and came back out of order because, well, they weren't there. There was just, the books weren't there. And when you're talking about books that are part of a run that aren't a high value book, have fun finding that anywhere. A lot of cons were searched, a lot of stores, LCSs were searched when I was out there looking around, and it led to a lot of, well, explicatives on my part, let's put it that way. So, here's what we got, and let's take a look at what we got right out of the box. I've done this all off camera over here for you guys, so it's, uh, you don't need to worry about actually saying, oh, well, let's just look at tape and crunchy things. So, let's start with the first two. Boom. The Completed Lancet Attacks, Part 1, Part 2, Marvel Comics, 1989. Nice black side to it, white lettering. These are custom image covers where you can pick with Houch and Bindery which covers you want to have on the front and the back of your book. This is a sample one. It costs very, or simple one, sorry. It costs very little to actually have this done as opposed to Buckram. Those of you who are curious what Buckram looks like, 
that's what a buckram binding looks like. It's um, You can get all sorts of things on it. But this is a small run that I just picked up the four issues for the miniseries and I had it bound because well, I wanted to read it. So that's a buckram looks like. So that's the one thing that came back. That's, that's one right there. Now these originally were uh, square bound comics. Square bound comics. Uh, square bound comics, when you send them down, they advise you to use, I believe it is defab on these. Let's see, where's my where's my order form on this? And I can actually tell you what these ones were. Tupa, 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 tupa. Hmm. All right, well, I can't find the order form right now. But I believe these were defab, which was something I was quite nervous about until I opened the last box. And for those of you who are wondering about that, you can go back and actually watch the prior video. It's on the playlist that this one will be in. And in there, I walked through my first time actually doing defab binding. Quite excited about that. That is the entire Atlantis Attacks. It isn't just the annuals. This does include the one-off issues. Uh, let's think about this now. What were the one-off issues in this one? There was a Marvel Comics Presents that was a tie-in, which I believe was a Joe Fixit story. Still haven't actually read it all the way through, so I can't tell you. And there was a West Coast Avengers issue that was also a tie-in to this. The West Coast Avenger issue that was a tie-in to this, uh, stupidly, is now a minor key because I guess it's one of the appearances of the uh, the Scarlet Witch. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts about that. Mostly that it's stupid, but whatever. You know what? It's a minor key. I had to get a cheap copy and stick it in here. So, kind of cool. The other one that's in here that I guess a lot of people suddenly has spiked interest in uh, over the last years was um, the, uh, was it the Punisher? The Punisher Annual. The Punisher Annual in this uh, had the Punisher and Moon Knight on the cover fighting. And because Moon Knight and the Punisher are both on the uh, the TV series universe, that suddenly went through the roof for no reason. Just just dumb. Just dumb speculation. And by the way, for any of you who are wondering, or is this first one of my videos you watch, I can guarantee you that at no point in time in any of my videos are you going to get spec discussions. Um, because I'm not a whatnot seller or a reseller of comics. Uh, I have no vested interest in trying to hype up demand in my own books. So what you're going to get is just a discussion of, you know, just the books. There, there's my aside for the day. You know, that probably just lost me a bunch of subscribers. But if, if that's why you were here, you were here for the wrong reason. Now, this is the last piece that was part of the overall run that I had to come back with that one. The annual story of Citizen Kang. This one actually had a bunch of stupid keys in it. Kang the Conqueror suddenly starts appearing on, uh, what was it, the last couple episodes of uh, the Loki TV show. And boom, suddenly you can't find these anywhere. Or if you do, you can find them for 30 bucks. 30 bucks for an annual that has no input into anything. It is not a key. There, no interest in what is these whatsoever for 20 years. And suddenly you stick, oh, look, this is me. I'm in, I'm, I'm in a Loki TV show. And everybody's out there saying, oh, well, you got to buy the Citizen Kang stories. Uh, you know what? Stick it. You don't need to buy the Citizen Kang stories. But I found them. And where did I find them? Of all places, in Florida. I was physically there, and I went to every comic shop I could find, and that's where I found the last of the issues that came with this. Bingo. So that's those are the last of the two project books. Now, some of you will have looked at those and put two and two together and said, wait a minute. Tennessee Fats, is this what you were going for him We'll get to that in a minute. Let's, let's, let's go. Because there are a couple one-offs that came in this. All right, one-off time. Bam. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So Man from Atlantis. Most of you will have no idea who this is. They'll have no idea what this is. Um, this actually severely dates me. Yes, it does severely date me. And it's interesting because I'm going to go on an aside on this. Because this, the first issue of this, and this is why this means something to me. Issue one of Man from Atlantis was first given to me in... Ooh, 1989. Yes, 19, 1989, which, for those of you who don't know, is a reference to the, uh, what is that, Public Enemies, Fear of a Black Planet album. Um, this issue, number one, was given to me as a package from Consumers Distributing. Yeah, that was a Christmas gift to me from Consumers Distributing because I just got into, well, at least people noticed that I was buying collect, collecting comics at that point in time. And what they did was they went to Consumers Distributing. For our American colleagues, you're going to have no idea what I'm talking about. So let me, let me give you the, the Coles notes here of Consumers Distributing. So basically, picture this as a retail storefront, okay? Your door goes over here, and there's a counter over here. You would go into these places that were put in strip malls all across Canada. You'd wander through the door, and in the middle, there would be an aisle of tables, just like the one I'm filming on right now. And you would have a series of catalogs that would be stuck in binders, and they'd have um, basically wax pages in them. And you'd turn the pages and flip through them, and you'd get a little piece of paper out, just like you were going to, like, for example, do it a bank deposit. You'd get a little slip out of the actual little box, 
and you'd write down the sales item number from the catalog, and you'd write down the price over here. And then you'd keep going through, and you'd write down any other stuff you want, and the price over here. And then you'd total it up, because you'd have to total it up right there on the counter using your brain instead of a calculator. And then you would take that up to the counter and you'd wander over here to the counter when they called your number because you had to take a number. And then you would give them your little slip of paper and then you would go sit down on the chairs and they would disappear off in the warehouse that would be all over here. And they'd come back with your stack of stuff and walk you over to the cash and you would pay and you'd leave with your stuff. It was the stupidest model because you would get the catalog mailed to you at home. Uh, so you already had it at home. And instead of giving you the ability to order it at home, you had to literally go into the store. So you're paying for a retail storefront for a basically a warehouse and catalog business the dumbest thing ever um it didn't survive i know I, I, you're shocked i'm shocked we're all shocked listen we're but either way moot point this means something to me because that first issue was given to me in that package that was i believe it was a christmas present and with it came a book on how to collect comics which i remember reading front to back because i think my entire comic collection at the time was maybe 30 books and suddenly i got this stack of uh, 15 or 20 comics with this book and instantaneously i was convinced i was a millionaire <laughs> I, looking back on it, it was the stupidest thing ever i have no idea how the hell i got that sense in my mind that i was gonna retire early off of comic books but i guess that's all just the hype about comics and that is what it is anyways so this issue in here this issue number one which is right here is my original copy given to me which is a newsstand uh in 1989 and i think this was published in what 70 let's take a look here what do we got here this was published in 1977. And Man from Atlantis, for those of you who don't know, was a great TV show. Uh, the guy later went on to be in Dallas, which was another great TV show. Uh, but they made two made-for-TV movies. Uh, and then they made, I think, one season of this series. And this is the comic adaptation of that. I have gone out uh, because, what can I say? When I sent this off, I suddenly got all nostalgic. And, and I made sure that I went out and I ordered and I went on Amazon and I bought the DVD Blu-ray of, of the two made-for-TV movies. And I also ordered the TV series. And I've been watching that over the last little while. And I got to tell you, it's, it's, it was a great show for its time. I'm really surprised that well, it just, it died. There's, there's nothing after that, but good point. That's that one. This is one of the asides that I did. Pretty cool. Man from Atlantis. That, that, that is just pretty darn awesome that's it and and again the the option of doing the uh, visual covers on these things just fantastic last one which is another one off this one took a while to find actually this is the complete collection of extreme prejudice image in the early 1990s did a bunch of or attempted to do a bunch of what marvel and dc would do every summer which is they did a massive crossover which should force you to buy all their books basically forcing the reading public to become familiar with every single one of their titles uh, and they still do it today. They still do it today. And if you think they don't, you're getting snookered. Take a look at what you're buying if you have a pull list out in the store active right now. Trust me. Yeah. So what this is is a complete collection of that. Now, I'll tell you, it's not complete, though. And I'll tell you why it's not complete. And I spent forever trying to finish this until I finally figured out why I could not find Extreme Prejudice number zero. It was a goddamn mail-away book. It never went out to the, publish, or to the public. It never went out through local comic shops. The entire time... You could only get it by mailing away. And I'm like, that's why I can't find it anywhere. I was digging through local comic shops forever, and finally I said, you know what? F it. I am not waiting for this stupid number zero. To hell with it. I got my collection. I'm good. Let's just move on. That's the last piece of the, uh, the one-offs. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about the one-offs. Now, let's get back to that earlier topic I was talking about. This, this, this is the thing. So what did I do here? What did I collect and what did I buy? Why did I do this? What was the overall project? Let's just let's just put these out here in some semblance of order so you guys can kind of get a sense. And then you're going to start putting this together, okay? Right. Okay, we showed that one to you earlier. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm seeing where we're going with this one. Okay. Hmm. And then over here. Hmm. And then... Hmm. And then... Where, where are you going with this Tennessee Feds? Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. What you got in front of you here is effectively all of the crossover stories that meant something to me when I was collecting 
and I was bought into, thoroughly invested into, the Marvel crossovers. This is it. And th this is funny. There's actually only one of these crossover stories that I didn't include here. And the only reason I didn't include it is because of speculation. Uh, I'll be honest. Every once in a while, this market, for good or for bad, uh, ends up getting its knickers in a knot, where somebody says, oh, well, this particular character, which has meant nothing to anybody forever, we're thinking about sticking them in a new Disney show. Or we're thinking about sticking them in a new movie. Or we're thinking about sticking... Oh, great example. Uh... Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to give that example up, because you know what? I will ruin it for anybody who has not seen Black Adam. Um, different example. Do, 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 do. Or I know. Scarlet Witch. Great. Who cared about the Scarlet Witch? Who gave a flying F about the Scarlet Witch? Prior to, I'm going to say, 2015. Nobody. Absolutely nobody cared about her. Why did nobody care about her in Vision? Because they didn't matter. That's why they were secondary useless characters. And then, suddenly they said, hey, you know what? Let's turn this into a thing. Let's blow this up. Let's turn it into a thing. And boom, you suddenly had, because the Scarlet Witch on her own, sure, that's, that's a character, but, you know, having the evil persona of the Scarlet Witch and having the issues where that was in there, which were dollar bin books, suddenly turned into 20 and $30 books. I'm sorry, are you kidding me? That doesn't make any sense. There's no way where really what I should be doing here is buying dollar bin books to fill out these collections um, and then paying to bind, which really, in most of these cases, the smaller ones should be like $10 in books. There's no reason why that should cost me $200. That's just stupid. So I didn't do that. I just did the ones that said, hey, these are still dollar bins or what have you. And some of them did actually have expensive ones in them. Uh, this one, for example, did have some expensive ones in it. This actual one here was an interesting one. I mentioned that earlier because I don't know why, but either way, while I was in Florida, I was able to get them cheap. So I moved forward with that one. But the rest of them, I just dropped. There were some, for example, that had some New Mutants materials in them that I just like, yeah, forget it. Um, a Spider-Man annual. Actually, I think the Spider-Man annual did actually end up in one of these. It did. It ended up in this one, I think. But... The rest I just said to heck with it. So this is actually what I did. I said all of these stories meant something to me when I was reading comics as a teen. This is what I'm going to bind. This is what I did. So now it's done. So my plan is, probably all over the summer of 2023, I'll be sitting out in the back porch, reading these from front to back, chronologically, just to enjoy the stories. Now some of you will say to me, Tennessee Fats, hold on. I know for a fact that there is actually a trade paperback of Atlantis Attacks. Well, you know what there is. There is. Uh, there is a trade paper back of this. Uh, it doesn't have any of the other stories that were included in the annuals in it. And it does not include the one-off stories that were not actual annuals, that were tie-ins. Mine does. Let that sink in for a second. So that is what I did. And, of course, while I was going through it, I managed to have some fun throwing in some other stuff. This was actually a lot of fun. This was a great process. And i got to tell you, honestly, dealing with Houch and Bindery was fantastic. I think anybody who actually is considering doing binding should totally send their stuff down there and should totally deal with these guys. They've been fantastic and they've been educational, answered all my questions everywhere along the way. There were even there was even one point in time when I was looking at the DFAB thing, which I allude to in my other video, where I actually reached out to them and said, guys, what do you think? What should I do here? And they gave me their advice. It was really, really cool. I enjoyed that. Out of the whole process, my whole culminating message was these ones where I picked particular comics to be on the front and the back, visually are a lot of fun. I, I enjoy having these, and I enjoy when I pull them off the shelves in the library that I can say, wow, look at this. The Bucker ones are pretty cool, too. These Bucker ones are quite nice. They are solid. These are going to last like a thousand, you know, not a thousand years. They're going to last like a hundred years. So I enjoy those, and I, I know for a fact that if you do bind these, it's very easy to just go out and have a printed uh, dust jacket thrown on this. It's all sexy. And you end up with something that's very close to a commercial product. Kind of funny. But I'll stick with these for now. Anyways, everybody, that is what we did today. It's This was a lot of fun opening these, going through these. If you're looking for a video where I actually walk through what do the terms mean, like Smythe and Defab and trimming and all that sort of stuff, that's in another video of mine. You can go back in the playlist and you can find that one. And I walk through the whole form of what does this mean, what does it do, what's best for this type of thing, uh, all that sort of stuff. That, that's all there. And really, if you are thinking about doing this, I would encourage you to do your research and find that stuff out. I chose Houchin because it was right for me. There are other binding companies, and I am actually planning on doing one more video along in this playlist 
before I close it off, where really I'm going to show you guys some similarities and differences between what I've had bound and what the products that I have look like in my hands, because some of these I've had for a year now, uh, versus another company's custom binding, uh, where I actually bought them from somebody else who had the bond. I actually bought, bought custom books from somebody else who had them bound by a different company. And we'll do a side-by-side -side on those. And I'll show you guys what I like and what I don't like uh, between the two. And the, it's interesting. I was just sort of spitballing this up in my office earlier. I was surprised at the sort of things I was coming up with. So that'll be another video for another day. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this one. I do hope you actually take the time and look into binding if you are considering it. It's a very rewarding project. And it's so great. Like I tell you, when this one came back last year and I sat down on my back patio with a cup of coffee and read this from front to back, it was so much fun and so gratifying. And having this project done now, this is huge. This this is a big one for me. Big tick box, done, move on, move on with your life. This is going to be great to read and I'm really going to enjoy this. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're having yourself a great day. I do appreciate you watching these things. For those of you who stuck around to the end, I do appreciate you watching the entire video and listening to an old man ramble. Trust me, it's very fulfilling for me. Everybody have yourself a great day and we will see you in the next one.